Well, I think because uh, uh, there, there is a human consequence uh, to the effects of climate change, and one of the consequences is, is mobility, uh, people movement, whether it's, uh, it's voluntary migration or forced displacement or resettlement, uh, planned resettlement. And so therefore, that, that, that has to be well managed and anticipated and people helped along the way in full respect and protection of human rights and dignity. And frankly, it's not happening that well. And so I think uh, this forum has, has been very helpful in putting that, that very real issue that we humanitarians and development actors have to deal with on a daily basis. Um, and so to bring that message here to the negotiators, uh, hoping that this, it becomes a very important part of the agreement. The climate change is not the immediate trigger of El Nino, but it certainly exacerbates the, uh, the impacts of El Nino. Uh, we're talking about you know, the worst drought in 30 years in Ethiopia, uh, for example, and, and completely wiping out you know, the, the, um, the potential to wipe out all the development gains of that country that we talk about as being a model case in many of the MDGs. Be but because of the impact of the drought has been so severe, the number of food insecure people, the number of people moving in search of food, the you know, and, and bringing communities uh, against each other and, and with very real potential of clashes. And this is uh, where I saw this happening in Ethiopia. But the same thing is happening in many other countries in East Africa and South Africa. I think risk, anticipating the risk, and we, know, we may not pinpoint where exactly the risk is going to materialize, but we do know the risks. And so we have to work with partners, governments, development actors to identify those risks, to analyze those risks, and to mitigate that to the extent we can, and prepare for the risk becoming and, and, and striking us as a real disaster. Disasters will happen but we need to be better prepared. And that has to be based upon better risk analysis and, and, and joint planning. I think the climate change agenda uh, certainly has come a long way uh, towards a closer uh, connection with the vulnerable populations. Today we're talking about 125 million people and a big chunk of them are displaced. And, and displaced, of course, is a... Is, that just the fact of being displaced it leaves people in very vulnerable situations. They, they're, they're people that lost everything, whether they've crossed borders or within their country. And so there's a greater need for a particular kind of protection and assistance to displaced people. And so uh, we, we feel that, that, that the human consequences of not doing something about climate change um, and climate change, not just in terms of natural disaster, but also the societal impact it has on, on scarce resources and, and that leading to societal tension and perhaps even you know, uh, flaring up as, into, as conflict. Uh, so we have to look at a holistic picture and in the end look at the human consequences and what this means for the most vulnerable people.